Hey everybody, before we start today's show, I want to tell you about a live taping coming up on October 3rd at 7 o'clock. We're going to be doing the Chicago Podcast Festival in front of a live audience over at the Beat Kitchen, which is 2100 West Belmont in Chicago. Uh, we're going to have three special guests and snacks. More information at the Chicago Podcast Festival.org. Come see us. The Feed Podcast is brought to you in part by United Healthcare. A lot of people think insurance companies are all the same if they think of them at all. Oh, I think of them all the time <laughs> when I'm paying my that? bills. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, of course. When you pay that check every the month. The copay also, that's kind of annoying. It is. It but is. United Healthcare is different. They offer a range of unique programs, things like Real Appeal, a weight loss program for a full year at no additional cost to your employees. And how does a $0 copay sound? Fabulous. That sounds really good. Amazing. I'm paying like 25 bucks right now. <laughs> if you see your primary care physician, that could be an option too. More information. Go to uhc.com slash benefits. This episode of the Feed Podcast is brought to you by the Chicago French Market. The market offers fresh ingredients for cooking at home, delicious grab-and-go options for any meal of the day, or even a simple picnic or office party. The Chicago French Market, a taste of Europe in the heart of the Midwest. This episode of the Feed Podcast is brought to you by Oscar's Mexican Seafood. With five locations throughout the San Diego area, Oscar's focuses on Baja-style fish tacos, fresh ceviches, and hearty seafood burritos. And all their salsas and agua frescas made on site every day. They'll even cater. For more information, oscarsmexicanseafood.com. You're listening to the Feed Podcast. Get the inside scoop by following us on Twitter at the Feed Podcast. So I love salmon, but only if it's king and wild and in season <laughs> and cooked medium rare, or better yet, sashimi at the hands of a reputable shokunin yeah, or yeah. artisan, yeah. right? Thoughts? Uh, well, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of with you, but I'm sadly with you because, you know, we could have salmon on our menu 12 months of the year and people would buy it like it was only in season for a week. Honestly, people just eat salmon all the time. So sometimes... I will belligerently take it off the menu because we're selling too much salmon. And um, that, 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 that makes me kind of sad because just like what you said, king salmon from Alaska in its season is absolutely one of the best things in the whole wide world. Yeah. So it should just be seasonal, I think. And that's only really in the summertime, late yeah, summer, yeah? It's, well, no, it, it, it usually comes in in June. So oh, okay. you can have it all summer long. We've had it on the menu in Topolo Bampo since middle of June. Now, what if it's, uh, I mean, can you make sure this is like Monterey or make sure it's a fishery? You said there are some farms that are okay, farm-raised salmon, but or, or no. Yes, actually, there are a couple of the farms that um, actually put their salmon farms not in bays, but in very fast running water. And so that allows all the waste from those salmon farms to be washed away. It doesn't just go straight to the bottom of the ocean right. and contaminate the ocean in that way. And there are a few places that have really figured out what the feed needs to be. Because what I think probably a lot of our listeners don't know is that all of those great omega-3s and sixes that you find in salmon that everybody thinks is re are really good for you they don't exist in the in the farm raised salmon in great proportion what you really want to do for health reasons is get wild caught salmon wild is always best yeah okay and it's best in flavor as well <laughs> yeah it i is. think it, I, I agree i agree okay so coming up on today's show a salmon challenge with the chef and partner at spiaggia here in chicago as both he and i attempt to come up with an easy weeknight meal in 15 minutes or less using salmon plus five extra ingredients that you can find pretty much anywhere Stay with us. We're fishing, cooking, and eating responsibly. This is The Feed Podcast. I'm Steve Dolinsky, a food and travel reporter at ABC7 News, the Chicago Tribune, and Canada's Globe and Mail. And I'm Rick Bayless, the chef and owner of Chicago's Frontera Grill, Topolo Bampo, Choco, Leña Brava, and host of public television's Mexico, one plate at a time. And every week, The Feed takes a deep dive into the world of professional chefs, restaurateurs, food artisans, and drink experts sharing their stories and uncovering their passion for food and drink. But that is not all. Rick and I are always traveling the globe for our jobs, eating, drinking, and immersing ourselves in the local culture. And if we find something exciting along the way, there's a very good chance it's going to find its way here to our James Beard Award-winning podcast. Thank you. 
Tony Montuano is the chef partner at Spiaggia, the only four-star Italian restaurant in Chicago. He grew up in Kenosha, Wisconsin, the son of a Calabrian meat packer, watching his grandmother stretch and roll pasta for many family meals. Montuano and his wife Kathy wanted to create a restaurant of their own that would carry on the extraordinary flavors that he found at his grandmother's table. He did a stint working at various Michelin-starred restaurants in Italy, gathering ideas and inspiration before returning to the Midwest, determined to realize his dream. Montuano received a James Beard Award for Best Chef Midwest. He is also the author of The Spiaggia Cookbook, Eleganza Italiana in Cucina, and the co-author with his wife, Kathy, of Wine Bar Food, Mediterranean Flavors to Crave with Wine to Match. Other Montuano restaurants include River Roast, his only non-Italian restaurant located on the Chicago River, Terzo Piano at the Art Institute of Chicago, Portobello Italian Restaurant at Disney Springs, and the family-run Mangia Trattoria in his hometown of Kenosha. Tony accepted our challenge this week using salmon as the main ingredient. He's getting set up in our test kitchen right now, and when we come back, we'll meet him and attempt to make an easy weeknight meal in 15 minutes or less. Stay with us. Check out previous episodes, get recipes from ingredient challenges, and see behind-the-scenes pictures at thefeedpodcast.com. Commuters have known this for some time, but over in the West Loop at the Ogilvy Transportation Center, there are more than 30 specialty vendors just waiting to feed you inside the Chicago French Market. Hi, this is Liz, and this is Lolly and Pops at the French Market. We're all about candies, chocolate, international, and truffles. If you come here, you'll see a beautiful display of truffles and marzipan. We have everything from vegan to nut-free. We can entertain everybody's taste buds. The market offers fresh ingredients for cooking at home, delicious grab-and-go options for any meal of the day, or even a simple picnic or office party. Have you seen the lines, by the way, over at the Aloha Poke over there? And there's like the Aloha Poke, there's a line, and then there's Fumare Meats, and then there's, well, as, as you just heard, the vendor. I mean, there's so much going on right now in that market. There's, there's quite a lot to eat. That's very exciting. i got to go <laughs> over there and have some poke. Uh, they've got two entrances, 131 North Clinton and 118 North Canal. And how about this? Covered parking is free for an hour with a $20 purchase. Wow, that's great. They're open Monday to Saturday. You can also grab a bite and surf the internet since Wi-Fi is free. The Chicago French Market, a taste of Europe in the heart of the Midwest. Hey, Rick, I got a question. Like, how would you describe a fish taco? My favorite fish tacos are inspired by the fish tacos in Baja. Um, usually there, the fish is dipped in a like tempura-like batter and fried, and then they got all these delicious toppings that go on on them. It's crema. And there's cabbage. Crema, cabbage, hot sauce, avocado. Um, they can so. be avocado. Some people put them, some people don't. But I have to say it's this stuff that dreams are made out they of. They are. I've done that trip. Yes. And I, you know, the, the next best thing in the U.S. is in San mm-hmm. Diego. It's called Oscar's Mexican Seafood. They started out as a food truck in Tijuana, became a tiny shack in Pacific Beach just north of San Diego. Now they've got five locations in and around the city, including the latest in Encinitas. Everything's fresh, never frozen, and they make their salsas and agua frescas fresh on site each day. More information, visit OscarsMexicanSeafood.com. How crazy is it to think you can actually have your insurance company pay you to walk? What? Yes, they're going to pay you to walk. United Healthcare isn't crazy. They just want you to be healthy. Oh, one of their new programs is called United Healthcare Motion, where members can earn more than $1,000 a year toward their health reimbursement account or health savings account just for walking. I didn't even know I had a health savings account or a reimbursement account, but I that would be a good thing. Um, how do $0 copays sound? Uh, absolutely fabulous. That would be nice. That's yeah. a nice uh, uh, advancement in society. Or pharmacy experience that offers more flexibility and less disruption. 
Well, if your company works with United Healthcare, ask your friendly HR person about their programs. And if not, go tell them to switch today. I'm going to tell mine. Call 877-233-2059 or go to uhc.com slash benefits to get more information. United Healthcare, a proud supporter of the Illinois Restaurant Association and committed to your good health. Get the inside scoop by following us on Twitter at The Feed Podcast. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We are up here in Frontera's Test Kitchen today with the one, the only, Tony Mantuano from Spiaggia. Oh, welcome, Tony. Yeah, thanks, Ray. Thanks. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Bon, bon pomeriggio. No, pomeriggio. pomeriggio. But wait, wait, wait. How do, you, how do you say that? Pomeriggio. Pomeriggio. Yeah, afternoon. Okay. Afternoon. Okay. Yeah. It's it's Spiaggia, brand new restaurant, right? How many years? We, uh... We've been open for 33 years. Uh, if you haven't dined there, what's wrong with you? I'm trying to catch up to you, but we're only 30 years, and I'm tra- I don't know how I can catch up. Well, maybe I can take a vacation <laughs> yeah. for two years. <laughs> and then we'll be equal. Yeah. Known for a little bit more elegant Italian food. Yeah, Michelin star. Um, it's uh, fine dining. I mean, you know a lot about Italian design and fashion and automobiles. You think of those as being like the ultimate uh, Italians. And so that's what we think of Spiaggia. Like it's not like a trattoria or your grandmother's food. So. Ever use uh, salmon? We do when it's in season. I'm sure, Rick, you feel the same way. Oh, so. yes. I'm not, not really into the farm-raised stuff. It's got so much more flavor when you find the salmon that is wild-caught. It's got the right oils in it. Uh, just everything about it I love. There's some good farm-raised salmon, but mostly we tend to feature it when it's wild and from Alaska. Yeah, and it's the kind of fish yeah. you could have on your menu all year round because it's you, so popular. Yes, if so popular. Yeah. So incredibly popular. So that's what we're cooking with today. And Rick's going to explain how this works so you brought the the salmon and he'll explain the rest so you got your salmon and then five other ingredients hopefully ingredients that can be found at the grocery store though i'm eyeing one of your ingredients that i think is really special but we'll talk about that in a minute um you got 15 minutes to make dinner we just want our listeners to go with us on this very simple tour through the kitchen where we make a simple dinner like i'm sure you make all the time at your house and it's not a fancy thing it's just a good thing yeah, not something you have to serve the Obamas like you've done before. A little bit more low-key, all right? Oh, they'd love this, too. They would love this, too. All right, so we're gonna, uh, Matt, our producer, is going to put the time on the clock. 15 minutes begins now. Okay, right. so, Tony, what is your plan? So there's a traditional Italian, almost like you see this, this preparation out throughout Italy. It's called tagliata, usually done with beef. And tagliata means sliced in Italy. So it's, and you would slightly grill the steak on both sides, usually reserved for a steak and then slice and then put back on like an oven proof or burner proof uh, pan and sort of finish the cooking with a little bit of salad on top. So I'm gonna do that with salmon today. And, and it's what are your so five, easy. And what are your five ingredients? My five ingredients are um, caper berries, fennel seed, arugula, lemon, and fresh fennel. Okay, and Rick is already tearing apart some of those guajillos. Guajillo chilies, yes. Uh, I'm going to make a very simple salsa that is based on toasted peanuts, garlic, um, this guajillo chili, and also a little chipotle chili. And then I am going to do my salmon. Actually, I'm making a dish that is on the menu in Topolobampo right now. It sounds crazy, but I'm going to use my little home sous vide machine to cook the salmon, and uh, you'll see the texture is just remarkable. Oh, and that's very approachable for most people to have a home sous vide, but well, that's okay. No, 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 no. On the, that prime day, they were selling the things for $129, okay? <laughs> All right, so the guajillos are dried and you've tear, torn them apart and you put, took all the seeds out. I did, and then I'm just going to press them flat against this. So it's a dry skillet over medium heat. Press it flat until, or them flat until they release their aroma into the room. They'll change colors a little bit, get a little bit lighter in color on the inside. You may see a little dark spot. And then I'm going to put them into a bowl and pour some boiling water on them and let them rehydrate for a short period of time. Usually I say 20 minutes, but today that's past my thing so I'm going to be making this with a 10 minute soaked guajillo chilies. Okay, Tony what have you done over here so far? You were chopping something earlier. Yeah so I took some fennel seeds and like Rick is toasting I think that really brings out great flavor in any dried uh, spice or herb so I took some fennel seeds I chopped them I put them with some of our 
extra virgin olive oil and put it on a burner in, in an oven proof sort of casserole dish and just want to warm it up and let those flavors sort of come together. Now you brought your own Spiaggia uh, extra virgin olive oil. I'm guessing so people at home could do it without that. <laughs> Would this just taste terrible <laughs> if will. you don't have it? It tastes awful oil. without this Piaggio oil. Uh, you know, when you're buying olive oil, look for fresh olive oil. And usually there's a date on the bottle that says best if used by, or it, it might even say the harvest date. So try to buy something as close to the year as possible that it, that it was harvested. And, and once you open it, use it. Like people keep around, keep olive oil around for a long time. It doesn't get better. It's not like wine. You gotta open it, you gotta use it. Now that is something that I learned when I was in Italy because we don't talk about it very much we here. Don't, right? And the last time that I was in, in Italy, um, I was uh, staying at Castello di Ama. Oh Do you my know God. that place? Lorenza Sebastian. Lorenza. Yeah. Well, so she brought it's out for us to taste last year's olive oil and the one just out of the press. And I was blown away. Same olive recipe and everything, yeah. same ground it was grown in. Yeah. But man, there was a huge difference, and I've never forgotten that. So now I look for really fresh olive oil. And Tony, you just sliced up some caper berries, and these are a little bit harder to find, but you can find them. This is from the Alessi brand, it looks like, but you just slice them up in little uh, t coins. Slice them in coins, and the caper berry is basically the fruit one. You know, the caper itself is the bud, and if it went to fruit, you would have the berry. So that's what we have here, and I did slice them very thin. I also took um, a salmon fillet, and I sliced it on a bias to get um, these it's an angle yeah a little bit of an angle so we have these slices that sort of look like uh, you know thin slices of any sort of protein um, and this is going to finish cooking like I said in the in the pan so they can't be too thick where they're not going to cook to the way you like them. Hey Rick, well, how are you doing yours now? You've got it in the sous vide setup over here. It's okay, a basically so a, a... here's the deal. The, these home sous vide machines are really just sticks, and they circulate the water, but you can dial in a certain temperature. And that's what is so special about them, is that they, within half a degree, they, they will tell you exactly what they have. So I have this at 118. So just think about that temperature. That's just a little hotter than body temperature, and it's going to very, very slowly poach it. But I didn't put the, the fish directly into that 118 degree uh, water. Instead, I put it first into a Ziploc bag and drop that in. So it's just the temperature of the water that's going to be cooking it. And that's where, like with poached eggs and things like that, you can get that amazing texture because you can so control the, the temperature of the water. We're about five minutes done, so a third of the way through. Tony was just uh, grinding some fresh black pepper, it looks like, on his salmon. Yeah, I think you can aggressively season salmon. I think it'll take on just about anything. So I have aggressively seasoned it with sea salt and, and uh, black pepper. And meantime your your fennel seeds and your oil are just hanging out on the stove in a kind of a heat proof pan yeah they're they are hanging out and hopefully they're getting along and they're becoming friends and they're going to make this dish like sing but you got to be careful you don't want to heat them too much right because you you, yeah. yeah and the, the the i mean that's how we're going to cook the salmon so that's gently very 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 gently here comes rick's crutch which is oh, the gosh, right, the I chipotles I was get that in here before you notice <laughs> that i had canned chipotles today um that's going to be one of my flavors because i'm looking for a little smokiness to this salsa so I put uh, one chipotle in here along with some of the canning liquid. And then I'm going to put, at the very last, I'll blend this salsa, but I'm going to put those rehydrated toasted guajillo chilies. And now I'm putting some peanuts in here. These are just dry toasted peanuts. And that, why? And that's the, that's the whole deal with this salsa. This is just a peanut salsa. So when you taste it, if you've ever had satay sauce, it will remind you a little bit of that. But because peanuts... Peanuts are actually a new world thing. They come from the new world, and uh, most people uh, trace their heritage back to Mexico. They have been used in Mexico forever, and m people make salsas out of them all the time. So I have one more ingredient. I have three cloves of garlic, and I put them in a little uh, microwave-safe bowl covered with water, and I'm putting it in here now in the microwave for one minute to just just to blanch them lightly so I can get rid of that raw garlic flavor. Okay, Tony has now set all the salmon um, in that same pan. Yeah, I'm making sure they're not overlapping. 
that's important. So they should fit snugly, but they shouldn't overlap at all because that heat source is the hot, the hot oven proof pan. So they, they all have to be touching that. And we'll just take it up, we'll cook it nice and slow and gently and take it up to the temperature that we want. Now, I won't cook that side that's up but if you prefer as a diner to have your salmon a little more cooked, you just take a fork and flip the salmon over onto the hot plate. Because it'll cook through enough and there'll be some carryover? I think so. Yeah. Kind of like what we saw. Remember, I keep thinking of that meatball recipe that uh, Coletta made because right. he saw from Dario Cicchini in Italy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He did one side of it. He and it kind did one side of it and then flipped it over and just let residual heat do yeah. finish the cooking. So it had a really lovely texture. Okay, so now what are you doing? You got some fennel and some arugula? I have uh, some fresh arugula, some fennel and so I took the fennel bulb and it's the bottom of the fennel the right the, the white fennel. like the fronds you can use but that sort of thick stalk is pretty tough uh, to find a use for but if you take the bulb and you slice it super thin on a mandolin uh, even like one of those inexpensive Japanese ones that are plastic uh, and then put it directly into ice water with lemon juice it'll stay nice and crisp and it won't um, oxidize at all so you did that just before we started so we are going to give you a little bit of a hard time because that should cut 45 <laughs> seconds to a minute off your time allotted so even though we've got about uh, how much time left matt Does, uh, i have to say though on a mandolin it goes really really fast it go fast you know that those I, they're a little bit dangerous because um that you can slice your fingertips off with those little mandolins but they're really really useful that one thing that i always recommend to people if you're going to use one of those mandolins they're inexpensive they're not like one of the more expensive ones but if you're going to do it you might want to invest in that chainmail glove yeah, sure. <laughs> because you just pull that out of the, the your cupboard and put that on and then you can just fly through things yeah not yeah. worry because i'm always worried about the very end of the carrot the or the cucumber end, me yeah. too actually and the other day i cut myself on one of those with the very end of the yeah. carrot it's painful yeah. okay six minutes to go guys uh, we're almost two-thirds of the way through time now speeding up a little bit uh tony's face just got a little bit concerned no or am i just reading we're that wrong good. we're doing good okay, okay you're doing good okay uh but so it's really yes. interesting that we both chose in this this time of the year when you would normally think about cooking salmon on the grill neither one of us chose to do and i love grilled salmon i really love it a medium rare salmon cooked on the grill is really delicious but both of us chose to go and we didn't talk about this before but we chose to go with this really gently cooked salmon i'm just in love with this texture right now and i found i just did it at home the other night i yeah. love it yeah remember when uh, bruce sherman was here he did a very gently cooked fish as well yeah, yeah. i think that's sort of low. becoming uh, something that we're all interested in right now yeah. okay so You've got your, your lightly blanched garlic and your peanuts and your chipotle, and you're putting a little bit of water into your water. mixer. That's going to be the liquid for this. And now Five I'm to go. Season it with some salt. Five minutes. And now I'm going to put the, um, the guajillo chilies in here. They're, they're not quite as soft as what I would normally want them to be, but they're going to be fine because this is a salsa. If I was going to make a cooked sauce out of it, I would be very careful to uh, let these rehydrate for another 10 minutes or so. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have quite enough liquid in there. And then I'm going to put this on to the blender bottom and make a kind of coarse pureed salsa out of it. Okay, wait. So, Tony, what were you doing over there? Are you squeezing some lemon? Yeah, so um, the salmon's starting to come up to temperature where we like it. So. Um, I wanted to add the lemon juice, but I didn't want it to hit the fish because it sort of discolors it. So I just sort of squeeze the lemon around the slices of salmon. And you can, you can start to see it now, how it's, it's starting to cook. It's starting to become opaque on the sides. Yep, the sides are just slowly becoming opaque, but the top is still that beautiful ruby color. Rick has uh, blended his salsa looks like yep it's pretty sorry for the noise there but that's the, the necessary evil to get this peanut salsa Do a little taste oh, yeah. well salt. Mm, yeah no i've got everything that i wanted this is not going to be particularly hot um i've got just enough heat from the guajillo and the chipotle that was in there to give me what i'm looking for and i think um I think it's great. Hey, three minutes to go, guys. That's moving up fast. Three minutes already. Wow. Tony has sort of hand-tossed his arugula and uh, fennel that you had dressed with some uh, lemon juice. 
Some lemon juice, a little bit of olive oil, and a little bit of salt and pepper. That's really okay, good. so Rick now removed the salmon from his sous vide bag. Okay, so it's, I just pulled it out, and then you notice that you can just flake this. Oh, beautiful. That's beautiful. That beautiful. So that's what... <laughs> It's 118 degrees for eight minutes. It didn't take very long to get to that temperature, right? No, and then once no, it was there, that was one it? One of the things that I love, the brand of the sous vide that I have at my house is Anova. Um, there's another one that's out there um, that's very similar. And, uh, but both of them heat the water really fast. And that's one of the things I love about it. So I'm just kind of tearing this fish up, letting it flake into large pieces. It really is beautiful. It almost looks like it's raw, but it it's does, not. It does, but yeah. it's got it a yeah. texture to it. Okay, two minutes to go. Um, and the cool thing about Tony's now, you're just plating on the dish you're cooking. I'm, I'm going to plate right in the same dish. And this is a, the fennel and arugula salad with olive oil. That's a big handful. It is, and a half. <laughs> handful and a half going on kind of a, a mound in the center just to see the salmon kind of underneath it. And you're gonna let it stay on that heat. Just for a little bit. And I, the, actually the heat is off, so now it's just the heat of the casserole dish or the okay. baking People dish. People have to remember that there is carryover. There's, lots, it's gonna coast, yeah? Carryover. Okay, Rick uh, has now put the little salsa, sort of draped it across the salmon on the plate. Yes, and I have a little, um, uh, like, mescaline greens here, and I'm going to toss that with just a touch of vinegar and salt, and that's going to be, I'm calling this a warm salad, a very lightly cooked salmon with peanut salsa. So we'll just put Having that around that. it. Been uh, on Top Chef Masters, we're used to with that clock ticking. That there. clock. Yeah. <laughs> it's got an internal <laughs> clock. It's a minute to go. That's yeah. exactly right. Okay, and that's it. Wow, look at this. Very impressive, guys. Uh, I love how Tony just has the same dish. You've got one dish dirty from mixing up a salad, but this is it really on the, on the plate you're serving yeah. on. It really is. It's really a, an easy thing to do at dinner time. It takes just a few minutes, and you don't make a lot of dirty dishes. Rick is just chopping up some peanuts now. This for garnish? So that'll be my garnish over the top of this is just some more of those toasted peanuts. I love the Spanish word there. for peanuts. How, so cacahuates? It's the most fun word to say. <laughs> cacahuates? <laughs> cacahuates. Yeah, that comes from the Aztec language. It um, sounds like it, right? Yeah. But there's also, well, I'm not going to go there. there <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things I could say, but I'm going to keep it clean, okay? All right. And you guys are done. Time's up. 15 we minutes. Are. Wow, look at that. With 10 seconds to spare. Very impressive. Okay. We're going to take some pictures. We've got, of course, to post these on our Instagram and our Facebook, The Feed Podcast, um, as well as thefeedpodcast.com. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to taste the results of what Rick and Tony have come up with. Plus, we'll preview some scenes from next week's show. So stay with us. podcast to get your weekly fix subscribe to us on itunes or visit our website thefeedpodcast.com commuters have known this for some time but over in the west loop at the ogilvy transportation center there are more than 30 specialty vendors just waiting to feed you inside the chicago french market my name is uh, dragan kovacevic i am with city fresh market here at the chicago french market you know whether it's something that's ready to go in the oven or a piece of fish that they can marinate at home and uh, cook themselves and that's what we're catering to here as a European concept of a grocery store. The market offers fresh ingredients for cooking at home, delicious grab-and-go options for any meal of the day, or even a simple picnic or office party. Have you seen the lines, by the way, over at the Aloha Poke over there? And there's like the Aloha Poke, there's a line, and then there's Fumare Meats, and then there's, well, as, as you just heard, the vendor. I mean, there's so much going on right now in that market. There's, there's quite a lot to eat. That's very exciting. I got to go over there and have some poke. Uh, they've got two entrances, 131 North Clinton and 118 North Canal. And how about this? Covered parking is free for an hour with a $20 purchase. Wow, that's great. They're open Monday to Saturday. You can also grab a bite and surf the internet since Wi-Fi is free. The Chicago French Market, a taste of Europe in the heart of the Midwest. Hey, Rick, I got a question. 
Like, how would you describe a fish taco? My favorite fish tacos are inspired by the fish tacos in Baja. Um, usually there, the fish is dipped in a like tempura-like batter and fried, and then they got all these delicious toppings that go on on them. It's crema. Or there's cabbage. Crema, cabbage, hot sauce, avocado. Um, they can so. be avocado. Some people put them. Some people don't. But I have to say, it's this stuff that dreams are made out. They of. They are. I've done that trip. Yes. And I, you know, the, the next best thing in the U.S. is in San um. Diego. It's called Oscar's Mexican Seafood. They started out as a food truck in Tijuana, became a tiny shack in Pacific Beach just north of San Diego. Now they've got five locations in and around the city, including the latest in Encinitas. Everything's fresh, never frozen, and they make their salsas and agua frescas fresh on site each day. More information, visit oscarsmexicanseafood.com. How crazy is it to think you can actually have your insurance company pay you to walk? What? Yes, they're going to pay you to walk. United Healthcare isn't crazy. They just want you to be healthy. Oh, one of their new programs is called United Healthcare Motion, where members can earn more than $1,000 a year toward their health reimbursement account or health savings account just for walking. I didn't even know I had a health savings account or a reimbursement account, but I that would be a good thing. Um, how do $0 copays sound? Uh, absolutely fabulous. That would be nice. Yeah. That's a nice uh, uh, advancement in society. Or pharmacy experience that offers more flexibility and less disruption. Well, if your company works with United Healthcare, ask your friendly HR person about their programs. And if not, go tell them to switch today. I'm going to tell mine. Call 877-233-2059 or go to uhc.com slash benefits to get more information. United Healthcare, a proud supporter of the Illinois Restaurant Association and committed to your good health. Get the inside scoop by following us on Twitter at The Feed Podcast. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We're up in the Frontera Test Kitchen today along with Tony Montuano, the chef and partner of Spiaggia and Terzo Piano here in Chicago. We can talk about Terzo Piano. Yeah, in the That's, Modern Wing at the Art Institute. Yeah, been open for eight years. Not as, uh, not as upscale as... You just redid it. You just redid it. You just some, redid the whole the, thing. thing. Yeah, really you redid it. Beautiful. Thank you. But yeah. more casual than Spiaggia. Much more casual, yeah. Okay. And Chan- it's really cool to be there and be able just to walk downstairs and see those incredible works of art. Have you seen the snowman that's on the terrace right now? I did, In yes. In the middle of summertime, yeah, there's a snowman. It's there's great. a snowman. It's yeah. very cool. Very well, the challenge today was how do you come up with something using salmon as the star plus five other easy-to-find ingredients and get a main dish on the table in 15 minutes or less. So, uh, Tony, describe your dish first. How would you describe this dish? So, an Italian, a, a traditional Italian preparation of tagliata, usually done with steak. We did it with salmon, thinly sliced in an oven-proof dish with olive oil, lemon, uh, caper berries, some toasted fennel seed, arugula, and uh, more fresh fennel. It's glistening. It's the it's olive oil, spiaggia olive oil on the uh, greens. Without that olive oil, I don't know if it's worth making. I don't know. Isn't that funny? It's both gently cooked salmon. Yeah. Grab a fork, man. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so I love how that's prepared. Yeah. Slightly cooked underneath, medium rare on top. Mm-hmm. Oh. I wouldn't want it any cooked any more than that, right? And that fennel is so good. Mm-hmm. It mixed with the arugula, I like spicy greens, and the the fennel gives it a beautiful crunch. And I'm also pretty wild about caper berries, um, so I, th- I this is a dish that is right up my alley. I like how there's a little bit of the fennel seed was at the bottom, yeah. and you put the salmon on top of it, and yeah. that's echoing the fennel on top in the salad. Yeah. That was right. on purpose. <laughs> let's, let's be honest here. You wanted some fennel pollen, but I said no. Uh, that's true. Because right. yeah. it's hard to find, I think, fennel uh, you pollen. You know what? I noticed it really is. Yeah. Yeah. But if you had your druthers, you'd say fennel pollen instead. I would. I'd, it, it's more fragrant, more fly. It's just really Okay, so incredible. when the guests are coming over, you order your fennel pollen from Amazon, and it comes <laughs> to your house, and then you make this dish with fennel there you pollen. Go. With your sous vide. Okay, speaking of... (laughs) (laughs) Okay, but but come on now. You could grill that salmon and do a similar kind of dish to that. But I just... I've never used that that sous vide thing on the show, and I thought... This would be the perfect yeah. time to do it because I actually cooked salmon like this at my house a week ago and everybody was just wild about it. Okay, so, so how do you describe this dish? dish? Okay, so I, I call it very lightly cooked or poached salmon with a peanut, a red chili peanut salsa and then very lightly dressed mescaline greens. Okay, so I love that. 
that red chili peanut salsa, first of all. Yeah, you said sete, but it's a little yeah. spicier because of the right. chipotle, chipotle and the guajillo. Chipotle and the guajillo. It's much more um, forward in that chili flavor. That's but really the, delicious. But the texture of the salmon, man, mm-hmm. again, delicious, beautiful. It's not, it's not raw. No. no. It's someplace between raw and cooked. It's very delicate, but there's a definitely an assertiveness, the heat yeah. on there. Yeah. And because salmon is a full-flavored fish, but not a not a fishy fish, I think it goes particularly well with that peanut salsa. Mm-hmm. And the greens are nice, too. It gives it a little bit of freshness. Oh, uh, I grew those. Bill, they're, 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 I grew those greens. Oh, oh you grew those greens. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that before we started, but now that we're finished, I'm going to say, yeah, those came out of my garden. <laughs> they're very nice. nice well, both dishes. Wow. Both. So recipe is going to be on our website, of course, thefeedpodcast.com. Right. Tony Montuano, thank, thank you so much you for coming so in much. and playing. This has yes. been so much fun. Thanks really for cool. Me here. Thank you. Great. Great to have you. Coming up next week, a Rosh Hashanah tradition with a strong Eastern European accent. One of my friends had this recipe from her husband's aunt, and so we tasted it, and we loved it, and it's our favorite, so I make it every year. It's a kugel throwdown with a pair of my favorite Jewish cooks in Chicago who will share their family recipes for this beloved dish, typically served on special occasions. That's next week on the show. Remember, you can always contact us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at The Feed Podcast. Or check out our ingredient challenges, get recipes, and other information about previous shows by simply visiting our website, thefeedpodcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe and rate the show on iTunes. Be sure to follow me at Rick underscore Bayless. And I'm at Steve Delinsky. More information about both Tony and Rick's recipes using salmon on our website as well. Linnea Dominic's our intern. Max Delinsky supervised today's music. Bureaucratic wrote and performed our theme song. And the Feed Podcast is edited by Matt Cunningham at Truthful Enthusiasm. Whether you're an individual or institution, get your story online with truthfulenthusiasm.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. 